Good day, folks, and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chaser Cyclone video update today, the 17th of February 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by our major sponsor this year, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. And I'll tell you what, the equipment that we've got from Campbell Scientific Australia will certainly be put to the test over the next 24 to 48 hours. Now, just to give you a quick update on our whereabouts, we are currently in Gove, or in Nullumbai, on the Gove Peninsula. So here's Nullumbai on the northeast tip of the Northern Territory, and if we zoom right into Nullumbai itself, we are conveniently located at Liquorwise. How good's that? Right now, a uh, cyclone party, big time. If uh, particularly if it misses us, uh, we'll need to drown some sorrows. But look, at this stage, folks, we're very close to the water. We're not close enough for the storm surge to, uh, you know, inundate us and kill us. But we are close enough to witness a storm surge if need, if if it develops. Um, and if we just take a wider wider look at where we are in relation to the water, we're here in the northeast, really in the northeast tip of the territory now. Further to the north is where the computer models are predicting the tropical cyclone to eventually hit and then start to track southward. So we might miss it to the north, but look, the fact is as long as it hits west of us, we're still going to see some fairly decent conditions here. Uh, some really good surf conditions we should see, definitely. But we're still pretty hopeful that it's going to get very, the core of it is going to get very close to us. The reason we're hopeful of that is because the track of this particular system is going to eventually push to the south. It's just a matter of when. When is it going to push to the south? And the computer models all over the shop, absolutely all over the shop, they just don't know when it's going to push to the south. So we know that eventually it will push south. Now at this stage, the computer model average is right over the top of Gove, right over the top of us. But you can see here a trend further to the west all the way out to about Manningrida and a trend further to the east into the central gulf. We don't think these ones here are going to happen. We don't think that's going to happen. We think that these ones from about there to there are the most likely scenarios. Uh, so anywhere from about Millingimby and eastwards of Millingimby is where we would expect to see uh, the curve to the south. So if we take a look at the latest track map from the Bureau, we've got Category 2 Cyclone Lamb tracking here in a west to west-southwest direction, intensifying to Category 3. You can see that we should be in a, some sort of destructive wind field by tomorrow afternoon to tomorrow evening, and then probably remaining in that destructive wind field as we go into early Thursday morning and possibly even as late as Thursday afternoon. Once again, it really does depend on where it's going to make that southward turn. Now, as I mentioned, at the moment, the models are favouring Millingimby eastwards, uh, but that could start to drift further to the west, depending on uh, when, depending on, I guess, the interaction between an upper trough and the, uh, the ridge that's currently guiding this system to the west. Now, I'm not going to speak at length about that, folks, because we've talked about uh, at length about that with subscribers, and really that's outside the scope of our general public updates. But look, the, the point is that eventually it's going to start to move southwards. It's when it's going to do that that is creating problems. And the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre, fairly similar track to the Bureau of Meteorology, maybe slightly further to the west. Uh, but once again, we're pretty set here for go for at least gale force to damaging wind gusts uh, and possibly getting close to that destructive core. Now, as I mentioned, we don't have high hopes for the, the exact centre to hit us, but really we only need to be within 50 kilometres of that centre to experience some pretty uh, dramatic conditions. So if we take a look at the Euro's latest uh, latest model guidance on this particular system, as we go to tomorrow morning, we can see at 4am the system has tracked a little bit to the southwest, and really by uh, tomorrow evening we can see the system is getting very close to landfall here to the north of us. Uh, as I mentioned, we are up here, so it's to the north of us, sorry we are up here, so it's to the north of us, but we're getting uh, 40 to 50 knot winds here in the Nillumbai area. Now, if we continue to track this system and all the way through to landfall, you can see that eventually, in the Euro at least, it has the centre crossing right over the top of us. But look, that's more like a needle in a haystack situation, and that's only one computer model. Overall, we, we can see a huge variability in the computer guidance from uh, around about out here out here all the way through to not even making landfall. So the fact that it's bullseyeing right over the top of us, I wouldn't read too much into that just yet. 
uh, until we start to see uh, more models come together. Because if we have a look at the GFS solution, and the GFS solution differs quite dramatically, we have a, a crossing here a lot further to the west, probably in around about uh, 50 to 100 kilometers further to our west than the European. So you can see here just between those two computer models, and we're not looking out that far, we're only looking at a couple of days. And the key thing here to note is the sharp turn made by the GFS and the Euro. They both make this sharp southerly turn. And it's right around about Wednesday night, Thursday morning that it makes that sharp southerly turn. And depending exactly on where it lies will depend on where it hits because that turn is so sharp that it basically tracks in an almost south direction from when it stalls. So as I mentioned, some computer models have that stall happening already tonight, uh, and in which case it won't get any closer to where we are now. Uh, so we're hoping as our cyclone chases, we at least get to chase something. So, you know, while we don't, while, while we don't like to see too much death and destruction, in fact, we don't like to see any death and destruction, uh, we do want to at least get a feel of the system, get a feel of Mother Nature's fury. So uh, the best scenario for us would be if the system crossed to our north and then to our west, which is un populated yet we would still get uh, wind go, you know winds of 100 to 150 kilometers an hour and still get to experience a tropical cyclone and get to show that to you on the live stream now some people are asking us about our live stream to do that, head to our website, click on the current chase uh, page. Now, you don't need to be a subscriber to get to this. Uh, and on here will be what we're chasing, where we're chasing it, and down here will be a live stream. So it'll just be a simple static live video feed. So at, uh, we'll just have a webcam set up for you, and it'll just be showing out into the distance. Now, if you're an OCC subscriber, uh, you will have a slightly different chase page to go to. And I'll just show you that one very shortly. So if you're an OCC subscriber, you'll go to your registered users menu and you'd go to current chase. And what will happen then as you go to current chase, you will have probably two live streams here. One that will be showing you as we're going. So it'll be following us as we're going and it'll be basically what I see you'll see. And there'll be a second one underneath it uh, where you'll have another... Uh, static live stream. Now we're not sure if we're just going to conserve a little bit of internet coverage here and just give you the public one. Underneath that will be our Instagram feed and underneath that will be some a, ta a table of weather data. So at this stage we're just having trouble with our 3G connection with our weather station so it might just be a manual updated thing uh, where I'll update it every half an hour or so with all the latest values. So here is our tropical cyclone. You can see steadily coming towards us. We can see some very heavy rain is just hitting us right as I'm typing this and as I'm doing this for you. You can see these rain bands are smashing us right now. I reckon we've had about 20 or 30 mils in very, very quick time. But you can see just a steady westward motion of this system here. No signs of stalling just yet. And on that track would pass approximately, if we were to look here, it would pass around about 60 kilometers or so to our north if it was to not move, not deviate from that particular track. So we'd be looking at it about 60 kilometers north of us. Right now it's around about 200 kilometers to our northeast. Alrighty, the second system we're watching out here is in the Coral Sea. It's uh, tropical Depression 98P. Now the Bureau is giving this a moderate chance of development. JTWC has taken that a step further and have actually actually issued a tropical cyclone formation alert for that system. You can see here gales possibly developing to its southeastern quadrant, but overall no gales on the northern side of it, so therefore not really a cyclone by the Australian definition of the term. But you can see the system is hitting the coast here around central Queensland on Friday morning. If we take a look at the Europeans take on all that uh, you'll see a fairly similar view from the European and if I just backtrack you here to Wednesday we can see the system initially developing gales here to the north. Now, on the that's th that's this afternoon. Now, as we look at it uh, over the next 24 hours or so, we're not going to see too much intensification according to the Euro. There is potentially still going to be some gales, but probably not wrapping halfway around. It's probably touch and go here on the computer model from the Euro. Uh, the biggest thing we're going to see from this particular system and that we need to watch in the longer term is the amount of rain it's going to create. So if we then uh, continue the continue the track forecast here we can see the co the coastal crossing happens around about Friday and it happens once again around the south uh, around the central Queensland or Capricornia coastline but what we what we're looking for is the amount of rain that it's going to create 
as it as it approaches the coast and as it hits the coast. And this is the big concern for southeast Queensland. Not so much the winds. Look, it might get to a weak Category One, but really, there's not going to be all that much difference to from a weak Category One to a uh, to a to a tropical low that's lopsided on the south side. Uh, but look, if we look at the rainfall, we're starting to get a lot of rainfall there on the Thursday afternoon, evening, into Thursday night. And then into Friday, we can see that the system hits land. We have a trough associated with the system as well, which extends further to the south. And that continually creates uh, some heavy falls of rain for southeast Queensland. And you can see that trough line right there. Now, the, the rainfall estimates have been scaled back just a little bit from what they were earlier on. You can certainly see in the last 24 hours there has been a better definition of this system. So it is probably, uh, the JTWC is probably justified in issuing a, a cyclone formation alert. Uh, but once again, the computer models overall do not intensify this system on its approach to the Queensland coast. And remembering, it's expected to cross uh, anywhere south of Mackay, more likely in this area in here. Uh, is where, where, where it's most likely to cross. And as I mentioned, anywhere south of that is going to see the weather. Anywhere north of that, you'd be, you wouldn't even know there was a low around. So generally consistent forecast guidance by the computer models. We're expecting a crossing here around about the 19th or early on the 20th, uh, around about that uh, St. Lawrence to Bundaberg Gladstone area is where the bulk of the computer models are going. So this is the UK. And this is the latest GFS forecast model. We can see probably the more eastern, one of the more eastern models, uh, and has a coastal grazing rather than a crossing. Um, and obviously with this sort of situation, you're looking at enhanced rainfall for 12, 6, 12, 18 hours uh, of really enhanced rainfall here in the southeast corner. The Canadian uh, expecting a slightly a sl later landfall and also a slightly uh, small southeastward trend uh, landfall. Now, the big thing with, to note with the Canadian was this time yesterday, the Canadian wasn't tipping anywhere near a landfall. It was expecting the system to track way out here to the east. So it has come back to the fold here, and we are at least seeing a landfall, albeit a little closer to the southeast corner. So I wouldn't be too surprised if you if you see the bomb over the next 6 to 12 hours put out a developing low pressure system out here in the Coral Sea to account for the new system that we're watching or the system that we're watching but has been on a couple of computer models forecast to get to a borderline category 1 level. So uh, don't be surprised if you do see a low there in the next 12 hours or so. One thing I would do want to draw your attention to, and it is a little bit of a worrying trend, is that the uh, towards the middle to latter half of Friday, where the access model is just going absolutely ballistic with some of these rainfall totals, it's tipping a three-hour rainfall total of up to 200 millimetres here in the southeast corner. Now, I'm hoping that that's a bit of a misprint on the computer model, but interestingly, it's been tipping that now for a couple of runs in a row. Now, it is out to 72 hours, and the access model, I mean, look look where it's got Cyclone Lamb. So you can you can see that the access model can be a little bit off chops when it comes to accuracy in the longer term, in its longer term, which is 72 hours time. But I would very much keep an eye on this area here in the southeast corner to see if that rain max, which is just an absolute amazing rain max over three hours, uh, will continue. I would hazard a guess and say they might scale it back to a little bit more normal uh, type uh, type rain that the other computer models are showing, which is more around that 20 to 75 millimetres in that three hours. But I tell you what, if there's 200 millimetres here in three hours, we got big problems, especially when it comes off the back of 200 millimetres in the three hours before it. So you're talking there 400 millimetres over six hours. Oh, look, I can't see it happening. I don't know if that's ever happened in the history of recorded climate records in this region but you know 400 millimeters over six hours would be just an an absolutely astounding bit of rainfall but look folks i don't want to i don't want to scare you here because i you know i know this model is so very prone to errors after about 48 hours so until it starts to show this within the 48 hour period i would just use it as a bit of an interest piece rather than a, oh let's go panic sort of thing anyway i certainly did find that interesting 
Forecast rainfall tomorrow. Well, areas just to our north at this stage are going to get absolutely smashed just to the north here of Gove um, and possibly as we go towards Elko Island tomorrow. Now, on Thursday, we're actually going to see a lot of that rainfall pushing further to the south. Uh, now, the issue here is where exactly will that cyclone B? Will it be near us, near Gove, or will it be closer to Manangrida or to the east of Manangrida? Uh, and obviously where it goes will determine uh, exactly which one of these pink bits actually comes off. So if it comes near us, we'll see this big pink bit near Gove come off. If it comes near Manangrida, we'll see that pink bit there around Millingimby, Elko Island come off. Similar situation on Friday. Will the system be closer to the east coast, or will the system be in the you know, northeast central coast sort of area and pushing inland from there. And that's why we have two different rain maxes here. The other thing that that we could see enhanced rainfall here around Gove is if the if there is a tropical low or tropical cyclone or whatever's remaining of it here, uh, we're going to see fairly moist northerly winds smashing into this region. So we'll see fairly heavy rain regardless. If it's right over the top of this area, we're going to see heavy rain. If it's west of this area, we're going to see heavy rain in the northeast coast of the Territory. On Saturday, the system is expected to track to the southwest, and so we'll see that heavier rainfall pushing further south towards the Victoria River Downs dis district. And that's where we'll leave the Northern Territory. Oh, one other thing to note is a general increase in shower and storm activity over the northwestern top end as well.